activist actress Brie Larson has just caused a storm by offending Christians in wearing a crucifix pendant during an interview while sporting an immodest dress. She's got such a low cut top on, leaving so much cleavage on shore, but nestled in the midst of all this is a huge crucifix pendant. How curious. Now this could be a ploy by her to try and elevate her much dented popularity, especially amongst the men and the right wing in general. A ploy to appeal to Christians perhaps through wearing the crucifix and of course an appeal to low level men, alternatively known as simps, via the revealing dress. As an aside, Clearly, judging by the comments, some of the simps were very excited, yet they too even noticed the crucifix, despite their attention clearly being drawn by something else. This comment thread is an interesting one, as it reveals how normalised it is for simp men to leer at immodest celebrities online. This comment, if you look carefully, has garnered over 800 likes thus far. There's many discussion points we can draw from this episode, which include, naturally, the obvious, the two obvious elephants in the room. Firstly, it goes without saying, this is offensive to Christianity in having a symbol of Christianity visible on such an immodest dress. Secondly, the second obvious elephant in the room is, it goes without saying that the actress's attire is immodest. It is not modest and it goes against Christian modesty standards. But in reality, despite the fact that we all know this, there's just not many Christians brave enough to talk about this issue as there's a culture of appeasement towards degeneracy and liberalism within westernised Christian circles, as well as a culture of people pleasing amongst the church. So for many of these Christians, the mere fact Brie Larson wore, simply wore, a crucifix is a win. In reality, what does it really mean for her to wear the crucifix? That's clearly a question for her to answer. Now, in a spirit of fairness, perhaps the actress Brie Larson is just unaware and she did not do any of this for publicity or enhancement of brand. Perhaps due to the emasculation of Christian leadership in America and in the rest of the Anglosphere, nobody Nobody has ever told her that this type of dress is unacceptable and to wear a crucifix alongside such a dress is a form of disrespect towards the Christian faith. Perhaps no one has told her this and perhaps she's never really thought about such issues on her own. However, it does beg the question, where is the Christian leadership? Will church leaders raise this as a talking point and bring this up to promote a more modest approach in dress and behaviour? Or will they shy away from it as it would be deemed as upsetting Christians and going against the thread of people pleasing within churches? Of course, when people are pleased and pandered to, they are more likely to throw in a few shillings in the donation tub. Speaking of leadership, I do want to raise the question, where's the Christian equivalent of this giant Muslim man who is all over the internet and walking the streets of Great Britain telling feminists stuff like they should wear the head covering and cover up. If he's telling these liberal hippie degenerates in Europe to become modest in dress, why is it that men in church leadership positions in the Anglosphere cannot even tell Christian ladies about modesty? Now ask yourself, who is the one that the devil is least pleased with? This giant Muslim man who is thwarting the devil's plan by telling all these women to be modest in dress or the church leadership which is complicit in the devil's plan of denuding our women via their silence on such issues. Finally, listen to this giant Muslim man as he turns the tables on the feminists by cleverly using their own arguments to promote modest dress. One thing that's often overlooked, not always, but it's often overlooked, is sexual objectification and commodification. Yeah, uh, Really and truly, if you look at the contents 
of most male magazines, you'll find that the majority of the information that is presented in those magazines are, is basically of the images of women and stuff like that. Im women are being used, commodified, objectified, uh, to promote products, to do this, to do that. And this, in essence, I thought to myself, really this does nothing but strengthen the patriarchy. Think about it, yeah? from a feministic perspective. I put myself into the feminist shoes for a second. Yeah? I said, this does nothing but strengthen the patriarchy. That feminists, ironically, I'll tell you why it's an irony, want to dispel. Yeah? So you think about prescriptions. Like, what would remedy the situation? If you know that you can't trust men, basically, because men are by nature going to want to objectify women, commodify them, they've always done that, you know, a full time, it's historical. If you know you can't trust them, and you know that men will definitely use female adornment to, you know, to uh, enhance their economic experience or their domestic experience or political experience. Doesn't it make sense to protest against, huh? I'm going to sound like a real feminist now for a second. Doesn't it make sense to revolutionary, you know, we can, we can become revolutionaries today and protest against male domination by covering up? Because if you think about it, that's a protest. You're saying no more. I don't want to be looked at in that way. It really is a protest. It really is a stand against patriarchy. Exploitation, oppression, commodification, objectification. I believe the hijab is the absolute, absolute most appropriate prescription for a feminist.